All right. So here's from Platypus. The Australian-United States Defense Alliance, key issue, and enduring alliance with the United States remains Australia's most important defense relationship and continues to act as a crucial force multiplier for Australian defense force capability. However, increasing financial constraints, the rise of China and uncertain nature of the U.S. Uh, re rebel rebalance with the Pacific all pose important questions about how Australia will further consolidate its relationship with the U.S. across the next decade and beyond. So here's the financial constraints. The U.S.-Australia alliance is often described as being founded on shared values and bonds of friendship. What, what values are that? Uh, what values is that? Like endless war? Does Australia share that value with us? I was kind of hoping they didn't. But this ultimately means little without tangible evidence of collaboration. One of the clearest examples of Australia and the U.S. working together has been the defense relationship. Um, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Yet despite Australia's public's continued enthusiasm for such collaboration, the alliance is fundamentally unequal, with the U.S. shouldering a far heavier financial and operational burden by virtue of its size. To engage with some of these challenges, Australia and the U.S. have made recent progress in finding new collaboration collaborative efficiencies, um, although such initiatives will continue to provide Australia with unique levels of access and engagement with the U.S., this will not change the fact that Australia will continue to leverage U.S. defense capabilities unevenly. Meaning, we spend more on our military in the United States than pretty much the next eight countries combined, maybe more than that. No other country, any other country would look at our defense budget and say, holy shit, this is insane. So Australia is not going to spend anywhere close to what we spend. Um, why does that happen? Because we have an economy of war. We have an economy of war and an economy of death, just like other uh, political empires and military empires that came before us. And we will fall just like all of them did. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy to think things would end differently for us. You know, and this is not like, like, this is not some conspiracy. This is not, this is observing the reality of the role we play within a world, in the world, which is not only morally disgusting. And that's, and that's like putting it lightly. It's going to fail. Like, like, like it's going to fail. No economy of war has ever worked in the long run. Look at ancient Rome. Look at what Britain used to be. Look, I mean, it doesn't, it's not. Do we really think we're going to end any differently? Australia probably realizes how insane it is, so they're not willing to go all chips in the way we are. And as Hoot Hoot points out, Australia has a pony. Australia actually gives health care to their citizens. They have affordable education opportunities. They don't have the bullshit we have, at least not to the degree that we have it. They've done something similar to us. They've privatized the Internet the way we did. And as a result, they have shitty Wi-Fi. Rise of China over the past decades, Australia's needs to contextualize its alliance with the U.S. Uh, has come into stark focus because of China's increased economic power and strategic influence. Yeah, they're making stuff in China. They make stuff there. They produce stuff in their economy. They don't just have an economy of war. So China's growing dominance will undoubtedly challenge the status quo. Yeah. Bullshit man points out, uh, as an Aussie, we give the U.S. blowjobs, no questions asked. You staged a coup in 1975 with the U.K. Since then, we do whatever you want, including key U.S. intelligence military on our soil. Um, I got gotcha. you. You know, I, I, I get it. And um, I, you guys should just learn from our mistakes instead. <laughs> you guys should be like, yeah, this is nuts. We're not going to, yeah, we're not invested in this. Sorry. If, if this screws over the alliance, oh, well. Joe Hickey, the amount of USA hardware going through Europe at the moment is enough to puke, to make me puke with fear. Don't puke with fear, man. Use that. Use that more constructively. Uh, being afraid is not fun. Puking for being afraid, that's even less fun. Instead of puking, uh, I don't know, like lift weights or something. Puking sucks. Um... Marcelo Conte, they added eight, 80 billion to our military budget like it was nothing. Exactly. Money that could have been spent on healthcare or housing for the homeless or green energy. It's so sad. And we never even talked about it. The public was never even consulted. They were like, oh, 80 billion like that. Yeah, no problem. 
But when it comes to healthcare or education or infrastructure or jobs program or renewable energy or green new jobs, how are we going to pay for all that? We only have drone money. That should be the slogan of the United States. We only have drone money. When it comes to endless war, all right, so implications of the U.S. rebalance. Australia's welcoming of a uh, rotational deployment of U.S. Marines to Darwin as part of the U.S. resembly uh, provides a further example of the growing alliance. So the alliance is still there. However, basically, Australia is not uh, putting the same into defense as we do because the amount we put into defense is absolutely insane. And no sane country, even countries that really want to be our ally, as Australia does, uh, are willing to go that all in. And that, quite frankly, should tell us something. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip from Get Your News On with Ron, the world's first viewer curated streaming news show. What does that mean? That means I log on to a stream and people tweet me articles over on Twitter at Ron Placone, or they use our Reddit subsection, which is just Get Your News On with Ron over on Reddit. And that's how we build the show. I'm seeing all these articles for the first time. We are literally getting our news on together. Follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone so you can participate. And this show streams live every Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so please do tune in. If you want to support this show, you can do so over on patreon.com slash romplacone, where for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts every week, exclusive videos, free tickets to shows when I'm performing in your town, and more for as low as a dollar a month. Please do consider it. Thank you so much for your support. This has been Get Your News On with Ron.